Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Greetings to our viewers at home. Welcome to our devotion. Um, the topic for this one is darkness before dawn. Um, before we go through it, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We pray that you may give us understanding, that you may give us wisdom through the Holy Spirit. In the name of your Son, we pray. Amen. In our Christian walk, it's not always smooth. There are times where the road becomes steep. There are times where it is just horizontal. And there are times where sometimes it's as if you're going down the mountain through the valley. Um, and at times, one may feel like God has forsaken them. Um, it, it has happened to a lot of God's people, his prophets, um, his ministers. They have at times felt like God is far away from them. But when we read the word of God, we find that God is closer to those of a contrite height. Um, he's always closer to them because he knows that they need him the most. And when these things happen, at times we don't know why. Um, we ask ourselves a lot of questions. There are many people who say that if God is there, then why did my son die in that accident? If God is there, then why was I raped? Those are some of the questions that we find. When bad things happen to those who are serving God, these are the questions that such people often ask themselves. And at times you find people saying that before I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, my life was fine. But ever since then, I keep losing things. My house is gone, my car is gone, and all those things. And what I want to make us aware is that we are in a great controversy. We may not understand why these things are happening. Or sometimes we may have a knowledge, but find it difficult to accept why these things have to happen to us. Why is it that the wicked people seem to prosper? They seem to have everything that they need in this world. You know, there are those dark moments in our Christian lives. Not that our lives are dark per se, but the road that we are traveling seems like it is dark. You know, sometimes when you drive, um, you may have to come across a bridge over you. And when you go through it, you find that it is darker. But eventually you will get through to the pathway where there is light, where there is the sun. It happens like that. And God allows some of these things to happen and take place so that our faith can be tried. There is no Christian or human being who will go to heaven without having been tested, without having going through these trials, without being tempted by the devil. So at times, yes, it may become difficult for one to distinguish between a test and a temptation. But I usually say whatever it is, remain faithful. Be loyal to God. If it's a test, pass it faithful. If it's a temptation, overcome it through the strength of Jesus Christ. We will take a look at some of the Bible characters and also our personal experiences. In the book of Job, we know a lot about him. You know, the Bible says that this man was perfect. He was upright. He ran away from evil. 
He feared God. Um, he holds fast his integrity. These are the five character traits that the Bible mentions about Job. You know, but despite him being this type of a person, there were experiences in his life that were very difficult. At times, I think no one in this world has gone through what this guy has gone through. Losing 10 children in one day. Losing all your cattle in one day. And the only thing that, not, let me say the only thing, the only being that was left was his wife. She was there with him, very supportive. But th there was a time where the wife also found it very difficult now. You know, when God allowed the devil to go again and visit Job, and God says, it's fine, but don't touch his soul. Don't kill him. Do whatever you want. But I, I know that there is none like that man. You know, it's highly possible that some of us go through these things because God trusts us. God believes in us. That through the grace of Jesus Christ, through the strength of Jesus Christ, we can overcome all these things that the devil throws at us. The Bible says in the book of Corinthians, no temptation has come to you which is not uncommon to men. So the temptations that we face, there are people who have been through there. So the strength of the temptations that come to us is always weighed by Jesus Christ. And when he knows that we can bear it, he allows it. Because once we become faithful and we pass the test that they, or, or overcome the temptation through his own strength, then our faith is strengthened in him. Then when people look at us, they say, indeed, these people serve a mighty God. There are times where you find it very difficult that you can escape from this situation, but God will be there. You know, it's amazing that John the forerunner, pointing people to Jesus Christ, saying, Behold the Lamb of God, says to his disciples when he was in prison, Go and inquire from this Jesus. Are you the one or should we wait for another? There is a reason here to ask that question. He was alone in prison, in darkness. He probably didn't see a way out. He preached about this Jesus, but now is finding himself asking a lot of questions. Are you the one, or should we wait for another? I'd like to believe some of you, some of us, have been through this experience, where we question ourselves, where we question God, but sometimes do not find answers. And it is highly possible that we may even sleep the sleep of death without knowing the answers. But when we get to heaven, all the seemingly unanswered prayers, prayers that seem to be unanswered, not that they are not answered, but in our eyes, they seem not to be, un to be unanswered. When we get to heaven, we will realize the blessing that was there. We will see why at times, we did not get what we want. We will realize why at times God did not take away or remove those obstacles. We will see a blessing that was there which we could not see with our naked eye. In Job chapter 2, after the devil has sent sore boils uh, on, the, on, on the soul of, of Job, the wife says in verse 8, it's verse 9. His wife said unto him, Do you still hold or retain your integrity? Curse God and just die. She was looking at this man who had done nothing amiss, 
who is suffering without a cause. No mistake, no error, but is going through a painful experience. It was hard for her looking at her wife suffering like this, always nursing the wounds of her husband. It was difficult. She felt for her husband. And she said to her, why are you still holding your integrity? Just curse God and die. Now, I think this was where his faith was more tested now. Because the spouse, the partner that God had given to him is saying all these ways. She used to pray for, for Job when ministering in the field of God. But now he's speaking like this. And Job says to his wife, you speak as one of the foolish woman would speak. At least Job is not cursing her insulting her or saying bad things to her. He says, you speak as if you are a foolish woman. Should we only accept good from God and, and, and not bad things? When evil comes, it does not mean God is not there. So it, it, it seems like Job was beginning to be aware that this is far much greater than I can think. He was involved in a great controversy. There was a discussion about his name. God said, have you seen, have you looked at my servant Job? There is none like him. That experience is with him. What we need to know and understand is that even in the natural world, when we look at how things are, there is a morning, there is an afternoon, there is an evening, there is a night. There is midnight, the darkest hour of the day. But we need to know and be aware that it becomes darkest just before dawn. You might be going through tough experiences in your life. Elijah, after performing a miraculous work for God, where even the prophets of Baal died, ran away from one woman, killing hun hundreds and hundreds of fake prophets, running away from one woman. And you wonder and ask yourself, how can such a thing happen when God is there? These experiences in our lives do happen. Right? You know, during the day, you may not see the stars. But it doesn't mean that God removes the stars and puts them somewhere else. They are still there. Just that we do not see them. But when it is darker, then we see those stars. It's the same with us as Christians. When we go through the darkest experiences in our lives, we need to shine brighter, just like this does. When the dark experiences come in our way, we should not shine and run away and, and, and renounce our faith. But instead, we should stand and be more faithful and hold our integrity and not curse God. The Bible says about this man, um, when all these things have happened, it says in verse 22 of chapter 1, In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Verse 10 of chapter 2, it says, In all this, did not Job sin with his lips? When we face such experiences, may we not sin against God through our lips. May we not sin against God through our actions, by leaving the church or leaving his work because we think that he has left us. He will never leave nor forsake us. These things will be there. But when we come out of them, then we will shine brighter. And our experiences will make us to hold fast our integrity. Whatever you are going through in your life, remain faithful to Jesus. Hold fast your integrity because we are facing a great controversy. We can win it through Christ Jesus. May the Lord help us to go through these experiences in his strength and in his grace. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Some of us would not have known your power 
save when we go through these experiences. Help us, Father, to surrender all and not sin against you by words, by facial expressions, or by actions, but remain faithful and loyal to you. In Christ we pray. Amen.